hard one, an ancient and a fully modern people. We are well educated, hard working, and steeped in democratic tradition. We are known the world over for our generosity and our solidarity with other people in their times of crisis. As a people, we have been tested harshly by history. Each time we have proven resilience and are brought to reassert our rights. The deep seated desire to live in a free and fair society and live in harmony with other people is embraced in our national makeup. As a sovereign people, we are the rightful masters of our own destiny and of all the natural and other resources of our territory. This right of sovereignty exists without restriction. It cannot be given away by anyone, whether by treaty, by forfeit, by conquest or otherwise. Earlier generations have defined and asserted our sovereign rights, our community, our nationality and our identity. We have had some success in the past, but our national best has never resulted in the empowerment of the people. The only legitimate reason for the existence of the state is to ensure that every person's needs are met, and that each can achieve their fullest potential and legitimate aspirations. It is not the role of the state to grant us our rights. The state exists so that we may assert our rights and exercise them each in our service. The citizens must direct the state and decide its policy and laws. It is the people who give it legitimacy, not the other way around. The people and citizens do not control the state. We face today challenges in this country. Today a new type of crisis is upon us, threatening us in no ways with great consequences for individuals and whole sections of society. It is possible that it will affect generations to come. The one factor which will give us control over our current situation in the future is the empowerment of the citizens, not just in words or aspirations, but in practice. If we empower ourselves, we will overcome this crisis too. The powers that be tell us that we have the right to vote for a government at the time of general election. But look what happened after general election 2011. We voted to remove the last government, placing our trust in the promises of the so-called opposition parties. Once in power, these parties reneged on the policies that they fought the election on. In opposition, they opposed the bailout of the bondholders, set their face against the closure of hospitals, cuts in welfare, increased income tax, and so on. Now they have adopted the self-same policies of the previous government that were rejected at the polls. Not only does the will of the people not determine state policy in Ireland, but the state is not subject to the supervision of the electorate either. Not only did the regulators fail to control the financial institutions, but they actually collaborated in the abuse. The decisions that are made in our name are made by a handful of powerful people, and the doll is used to rubber stamp them. We are openly told that the IMS is in town, we must do their bidding. We live in a state now, unfortunately, in which we the citizens are ruled over rather than ruling. And we need to find a way to empower ourselves. We need to find a way to get back to this country and not be ruled by exactly like I said the powers that be. And this is why we set this up, this is why we set up the whole Occupy Pen, this is why we do the marches every single Saturday to try and raise awareness for people of what's actually going on and that we need to do something. We can't just sit by and let it happen. Because it is happening and unless we do something about it, it's not going to stop. We're spending millions and billions in bailouts, months in, months out. And directly linked to that is the cost that you're seeing in education, the cost that you're seeing in hospitals, the cost that you're seeing in health, the increased tax such as the household tax here, the water tax, etc. 